How to lose weight with a busy lifestyle? This is part three of the new series, Weight Loss for Busy Professionals. If you haven't watched part one and part two yet, I highly recommend you pause this video now and go watch those. In this video, we're gonna apply the information you gathered from your food experiments to help you start the process of losing weight. Watch until the end of the video, because I'll show you why weight loss rests in the palm of your hands, literally. I'm Dr. Ram, physician, bodybuilder, and founder and head coach at Ram Wellness, where we help busy professionals like you upgrade how you feel, look, and perform for life. Hit that subscribe button below for more workout tutorials, nutrition tips, and success mindset hacks. But hey, you're here to find out how to lose weight with a busy lifestyle, so let's get started. So far, we've laid a nutritional foundation with the five seeds and the three cues for conscious eating. These tools combine to form the key to weight loss success, sustainability. Sustainability is the cornerstone of weight loss success. That is, losing weight and keeping it off because it requires you to consciously choose foods for your body that allow you to feel, look, and perform at your best on a daily basis. Now that you know what to eat and how to eat for your individual needs, we're ready for a discussion about how much to eat specifically for weight loss. Introducing and maintaining a relative caloric deficit or negative energy balance is the only way that weight loss will occur. Even if you are choosing the right foods for your body according to the five seeds of nutrition and eating them consciously according to the three cues for conscious eating, you will not lose weight unless you're in a caloric deficit. As a recap, a caloric deficit or negative energy balance simply means your body is burning more calories than you're consuming. This can be achieved by increasing energy output, decreasing energy input, or both. So how do we know how much we should be eating to lose weight? There are various ways of tracking energy input, such as calorie counting and macro counting. Calorie counting simply requires you to know how many calories are in the foods you eat throughout the day. Macro or macronutrient counting is an indirect measure of calories and requires you to know how many proteins, carbohydrates, and fats you consume throughout the day. Without going too deep into either of these methods, just know for now that these are both methods for accomplishing the same end, which is caloric restriction. By restricting total calories per day, we can limit the amount of energy input in a way that creates a caloric deficit or negative energy balance with respect to our energy input. Energy output includes, but is not limited to, exercise. Your body requires energy just to be alive. It also uses energy for basic activities of daily living, like walking around, showering, and scratching your head. Energy is also required to break down the foods you consume. If you combine all of these energy requirements, you would get your metabolism, or more accurately, your total daily energy expenditure. Once you eat close to this amount of calories every day and you're healthy, you will maintain your body weight. In this case, you're eating your maintenance calories or at a net neutral energy balance. You're neither gaining nor losing weight. If you were to eat above your maintenance calories for a period of time and started to gain weight, this is called a net positive energy balance since your energy input is greater than your energy output. If you were to eat below your maintenance calories for a period of time and started to lose weight, this is called a net negative energy balance since your energy input is less than your energy output. Stated another way, you're burning more calories than you're consuming in food. The bottom line here is, if you're losing weight, you're in a net negative energy balance or in a caloric deficit. If you're not losing weight, you are not in a caloric deficit. So, without having to read nutrition labels and measure everything you eat right now, how do you enter a caloric deficit? We're going to experiment. Let's start with a little structure. We're gonna eat two to four meals a day, depending on our individual preferences and needs. There are no required meals. Don't like eating first thing in the morning? Then don't eat breakfast, it's that simple. Remember, there is no right or wrong, good or bad, best or worst here. There's only what works for you. If you haven't really paid much attention to how many meals work best for you, start with three meals evenly spaced throughout your day and go from there. Focus on whole foods that fit in with your five seeds. No sides, 
No snacks between meals. Use the three cues for conscious eating while you eat each meal. Eliminate calories in liquid form like lattes, sodas, and smoothies. Stick to water, coffee or tea, and zero calorie drinks. Opt for sugar substitutes or artificial sweeteners for now and low calorie creamers. With each meal, first choose a protein source like eggs, meat, or tofu, about the size of your open palm. Then choose non-starchy carbohydrates like vegetables about the size of your fist. Then choose a starchy carbohydrate like rice or fruits about the size of your cupped palm. Then choose a fat source like avocado or nuts about the size of your thumb. For now, the portion size only matters according to your five seeds and three cues for conscious eating. So to recap, we're eating two to four meals per day according to our preferences, made of whole foods and according to our five seeds. We're spacing those meals out evenly throughout the day. So if you have 12 hours in which to eat and you prefer to have three meals per day, you'll eat approximately every four hours or when you're truly hungry. No sides with your meals and no snacks in between meals. Just focus on making meals the mainstay of your nutrition. We're choosing portion sizes for proteins, non-starchy carbohydrates, starchy carbohydrates and fruits, and fats just using hand measurements. Do this for two weeks and see if your weight decreases. Continue eating in this manner until your weekly weight no longer decreases. When your weekly weight loss stalls, decrease your portion size of one meal to one half of what you'd been eating before for carbohydrates and fats. Keep your protein the same. Do this for two weeks. If you're losing weight, keep eating this way until your weekly weight loss stalls. Once your weekly weight loss stalls, and it will eventually, decrease your portion size of another meal to one half as you did for the first adjustment. Continue this process either until you've achieved your desired weight or until you've reduced all of your meals to one half of what you were eating at the beginning. For most, just practicing the five seeds of nutrition, the three cues of conscious eating, and implementing this structure to your eating will result in significant weight loss. If you're still struggling with weight loss or wish to speed it up further, remember that we've only addressed the energy input side of the energy balance equation. That is, we've only acted so far to reduce food intake. We can also increase energy output by various methods. What methods? Well, that's exactly what we'll be covering in part four of Weight Loss for Busy Professionals. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed part three of the Weight Loss for Busy Professionals series. This week, we introduced a bit of structure to eating and learned how to use our hands to estimate portion sizes. Look out for part four of this series as we take weight loss success to the next level. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more videos like this. Remember always, aim for exceptional. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.